Welcome to Electron Online and now let's take a look and see what we can do with what we would call continuous random variables. So let's say that we want to test some batteries. We have 200 batteries. We want to see how long they will last. And we go ahead and we hook them up and we just watch them until they run out of juice, so to speak, out of electricity. And if we have 200 batteries, we can see that there's this continuous change in the amount of time that batteries will last. Obviously, they seem to peak right around five hours, but there's quite a few that last less than five hours and quite a few that last more than five hours. But there's not such a thing as a discrete number here. We cannot say there's so many that last exactly one hour, so many that last exactly two hours. It's a continuous distribution, so we can handle it in two ways. One of the ways in which we can handle this is by using what we call a function a probability distribution function and use calculus to calculate certain things or what's sometimes also used is we can put things in bins for example we can actually do the experiment measure exactly how long each one of them lasts and of course that would be so many hours so many minutes so many seconds for each one and then we group them together in how many batteries lasted from zero to one hours how many batteries lasted between one and two hours how many batteries lasted between two and three hours and so forth and if we do that you can see that we can actually come up with a certain number of batteries that last within that time period here you can see there's one that lasted between zero and one hours, three between one and two, 12 between two and three, 36 between three and four, 83 between four and five, 55 between five and six, and five between six and seven, and none lasted more than seven hours. So we can then take that graph and put it into what we call a bar graph or a histogram. And here we can also draw what we call a the probability distribution graph or histogram where we can see that the height of each column is proportional to the probability that you'll have a battery that lasts that much time within that particular time frame and hours so between zero and one hours and so forth so you can see that only a half percent of all the batteries will last between zero and one one and a half percent will last between one and two six percent will last between two and three and so forth again the total should add up to 100%, which is equal to 1. So if you add up all the probabilities, you should get out equal to 1. And here, when you add up all of them, you should get 200 batteries, or a total of 200, because we did 200 experiments. We had 200 separate batteries for which we measured the time. But here, you don't have that feel of that how many fall within each category until you actually write it down like this. So quite often, this may be a more useful measure, something to work with, and sometimes having this function will be more useful measure because then we can use calculus to calculate the probability that it will last for so long or at least this long and so forth and we'll show you some examples of that later right now we're just going to do with the discrete kind of functions discrete kind of distributions and you can see that even if you have a continuous distribution you can map that into a discrete distribution and use it as such and so therefore that was a good example to show you how to handle a what we call continuous random variable and turn that into what we'd call a discrete set of random variables and that's how we do that